Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. First, thank you all for coming, and glad you guys are here, and hopefully we uh, have some fun and exciting things for you to learn. So my name is Christopher McClung. I am a, actually, curriculum developer is my official title, but that's only a title because, as many of us know, there's so many other things that go into just having a title. And so I, I am a part of CTE Teach. I get to help with that, travel up and down, and, and just glad that I get to do that. I'm excited. I really, there's a lot of jobs I've had, and this is the one that I look forward to coming to every morning. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, and so this is uh, Peter Puentes. And how are you? Um, I'm the CTE Teach coordinator. I just started this year. And um, so this is my first presentation for introducing everyone to CTE Online and the different resources and some of the new people coming out of this year. So the goal of what we're going to do is just, like I said, show you some CT Teach resources that we have available. Uh, for those of you who work with teachers or maybe are teachers, we hope to kind of give you, you know, just some stuff to take with you. So I'm going to kind of go through. Okay, so for housekeeping, everybody knows where the restrooms are. They're all the way down the hall and then turn left. Okay. So if you need to go to the restroom. Um, and then this is, this is a, what we call a loosey-goosey presentation. So at any time you want to stop us and say, hey, I don't understand that, or I have a really great idea of something, yeah, feel free to jump in. There's seven, there's nine of us, so that's good. Uh, one of my favorite, I'm in, I'm in school right now myself. One of my favorite things is that a class of only six people, and it's one of my favorite classes just because we get to be you know, kind of more intimate with each other. So. Um. Oh, sorry, if you have, didn't sign in, please make sure you sign in before you leave. And there's also um, travel reimbursement forms. I don't know if anybody came very far, but they're there. If you have the items that are required, you can submit those to the address that's on the bottom. Okay. And we have this bit.ly here. If you go to it, um, it, is all, it is case sensitive, but if you go to bit.ly forward slash empower Fresno, you can follow along with us on the presentation, or you can just click this QR code there, scan that, and you can follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is an icebreaker. So what we're going to do um, is I'm going to have all of you get up, and, and if any of you saw our private pirate presentation yesterday, you could get to learn that we don't want to make a sit your seats too long. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by pretending this is an, an invisible map of the world. So let's say right about here is Southern California. Way over there would be New York. Oh, I thought this would be Northern California, and then New York would be over there. New York's over there? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's not my map. So like, that's Southern California, Northern California, and then this would be the East Coast. Okay. So this is the United States. So this is, oh, so we're going this way? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So what we want you to do is go ahead and get up, Sorry. and that's <laughs> beauty of imagination, is go ahead and get up and want you to stand in the place of where you were born. So New York's way over here. So now New York's over there. You're gonna stand in the place of where you So everything we're going to show you this morning, um, again, are kind of things you guys can do in your programs, in your classrooms. Uh, we like to do that as, as a neat visual of like where everybody was born. One time we did this and we had somebody who stood almost in a different room because they were born in Africa. And it was just neat. And the person that I had worked with for like a year and never knew like she was born from that far away. So, and then you can use this, like we mentioned it yesterday, you know, if you're a medical teacher, you could do this with having your students stand like in the heart, like where is the aortic valve and left ventricle and all that stuff. And cool. Well, welcome again, everyone. Glad you're here. Okay, so we're going to start with a brief overview, overview of what CTE teaches. And it's a teacher training and professional development program for new and veteran teachers. And it's a partnership that's developed between Colton Rowland and Kaiba RLP the California Department of Ed and was funded through a technical education initiative. And there were, there's several reasons why CTE Teach was created. Um, as we all know, we have a teacher shortage. It's hard to get people to come out of industry into education and to successfully make that um, I don't say transfer, but come in and be successful. So we want to increase teacher retention. Um, address the unique needs of CTE teachers. 
have qualified and satisfied teachers in classrooms, and it was modeled after um, a teacher induction program that was developed by Crygoff originally, and it's designed to be implemented, implemented statewide for CTE teachers to transition from industry to education. So um, a lot of the educational opportunities that edu educators have cost money. However, CTE Teach is online. It is sustainable. You can jump in any time. If you're looking for specific um, information or skills that you're looking to develop in your classroom, you can select from a wide range of topics to review. And when you're, you complete them, you can actually download a certificate that shows you've completed that module in the CTE Teach modules. Um, and it's, it's updated continuously with new and emerging content. Uh, I believe our newest module may have been a year to two years ago. We're looking into developing some new modules and updating what's already there. Um, but we have also started to implement a lot of um, social media where we can um, post content there also as well. Um, so um, basically we want to give you just some quick data. This is, so as we said, CT Teach was created to help teachers who are in industry coming now they're in teachers. And so these are just, well, if you guys want to look over this, you can. But just some statistics as to what we've been doing over the last several years, the amount of educators we have served. Uh, one of the ones that I think is really neat is over 7,000 new and better teachers receive professional development, uh, which is really neat to say that there's something out there specifically for CT teachers. And then every year, there are specific districts that we work with. Um, these are the districts that we are working with this year, and we kind of help, we go alongside them um, in their professional development, helping their mentors who are mentoring CT teachers. What we're really proud of is this is our second year that we have some charter schools that we're starting to work with, which is really neat to see that charter schools are starting to bring in CT teachers. So we're going to take a, a few minutes give you the opportunity to discuss at your table um, the resources that you have available to you um, for continuous learning, teacher effectiveness, and staying industry current. Like, What are some of those resources that are available to you through your school districts? And you can talk at your tables. And we're going to have a Mentimeter, which is where you'll put some of your key takeaways from your table talk. So you're going to think about the available resources your districts provide and how they help you with continuous learning, Increasing effectiveness and staying industry current. Okay, so we're going to take a couple minutes. Okay. So let me bring everybody back together. Uh, what we're going to have you do is if you have your phone or any sort of device, what you can do is go to this website. It's minty.com. And this is one of the first resources that we're going to show you if, you, if you're not using it already. Um, it's a completely free website to use. It's called Minty Meter. And what you can do with your students is you pose a question up here. You guys will go to this website, minty.com. It's going to ask you for this, this uh, three-digit code here. Type that in, and then once you, once you type in what your response was, it'll start populating up here right after you type it. So again, so what we want you to do is just post some of the things about what you discussed at your table just now. Yeah, so we'll move on. Um, And so um, CTE Teach was developed on these four cornerstones. And the idea was to increase teacher retention, increase uh, their effectiveness, improve and provide training, and to promote student learning. Those are the, the four components. And hopefully the, the resources that we provide through CTE Teach and CTE Online will help your new teachers within these areas. So that's a discussion we just had. So, and like I said, we're trying to add to it to implement some newer content. So as we go forward, that's something that we'll be looking at as well. Exactly. It's important stuff. So, uh, so the way we, we just, as we already have already mentioned, CT Online is what we're going to show you in a minute here. For those of you who have not used it, we're going to give you just a real quick guided tour of it. Um, CT Teach as a whole, we do online training. We have webinars available uh, that we do to kind of touch on some of these topics, classroom management, technology. Uh, just resources that are out there for CT teachers. Um, On-site training, so those of you who were, yesterday you went to uh, the Fresno in-service and we did the pirate training, that's part of 
I was getting a phone call, hey, can you do that pirate thing again? We said, yeah, and we came on air and did, and we love doing that. Um, and then media, so this is newer stuff that we're doing this year, uh, literally just as of July. Uh, we've got a YouTube page that we're posting a lot of our stuff on. Um, we're we're pod, trying to do podcasting regularly, at least post something um, pretty regular, and, um, and then Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's just, go ahead. Uh, is your CT teach, is it Cry Rock CT teach or CT teach? How are you Twitter? For on these? Um, so for Twitter, and I'll, there's a slide I'll show you in a minute that has all that. Yeah, but for it. Twitter, it's CTE underscore teach. <coughs> and then I think the YouTube and the podcast is just CTE teach. Okay. Yeah, just CTE teach for the YouTube then. Mm -hmm. And it's the one with the Apple. There's another one, I think, <coughs> but they've not posted anything in like 15 years. Oh. Um, Because what we're going to post on there is um, these presentations we post on there, including our TIF, our teacher induction program. Um, we have one last month, and we have somebody filling in for us tonight. We have two of our TIF, three of our TOAs filling in tonight. So once that's um, recorded and edited, we'll post that one on there also. Um, so those are some of the most current things that we post. Yeah, exactly. So now we're going to show you guys CTV online. First log in, you should have a little apple down here. And you click on that. Now for you, I believe it's going to say join. If you haven't joined, it might yeah. say join the CT Teach group. Is there anybody that's not part of the CT Teach group? I don't think I'm part of the group. Oh, not yet? Okay. So once you're in, those of you who have a device, and once you're in CT Online, you can just click on the apple. It should be in the bottom left. Um, there's that CT Teach Apple. If you click on it, it will take you to where all of our stuff is housed. And the first ones we're going to start with are the workshops, which will be at the bottom left there. And again, once you've joined the group, then you can click on and see all of the workshops that we have. They are not, they're in chronological order. However, they start with the oldest first, which I think should be flipped to put the newest at the top, because if you're unfamiliar with it, then you're not going to realize, oh, this one's older than the rest of them. So go ahead. Sorry. No, that's OK. So as you can see, we have instructional strategies here. Here's our one of the other Teach Like a Pirates we've done. And we have a workshop on grading and rubrics. Uh, we'll kind of go through some of these other ones. This was the last uh, tip meeting we did last month. Um, and then when we're when our Colleagues are done with the one tonight. We'll have that one um, here is, is available as well. And so this just kind of gives you, shows you like what we're doing every month for our own CT teachers. And we have, what do we have, about 12, 14 right now? I think it's 14 or 15. Yeah, 14 right now that we're taking them through all of that. These are really great resources. Um, I know there are several that were posted last year that, uh, that were outstanding. The differentiation in the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate that. Oh, thank you. And so since Pirate is a popular one, um, that's it here. If you click on it, it'll open up and it'll just basically bring you to everything that we've used. Um, I think this is the first one you saw, Janet, up in Sacramento. And so that's just that, that presentation on student engagement. <coughs> Uh, close that. So these are the and, workshops. And they're all free. So if you have a workshop that you're trying to plan and you're trying to come up for a, with a topic or you know a topic, it would always be good to go in here to see if there's something that already exists. 
kind of like you don't reinvent the wheel, just update it a bit. That's right. So those are all free, and they're on Google, so you would just have to, um, well, for the ones we've uploaded, they're on Google, so they would, you would just save a copy to your drive, mm -hmm. and then you could see what resources are in there and edit it from there. That's right. It's not called stealing. It's called sharing. <laughs> it's sharing when you're an adult. Uh, so let's, the next part we're going to look at, um, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go one page back to the home page is we're going to look at the webinars, which is the next one down. And if I go too fast, please feel free to stop me. But now I'm, I'm back at our CT Teach Mentor page, and we're going to click on webinars. And again, these are more free resources. These are, uh, for the most part, they're the, the actual video recordings right. of the webinar that we gave. Except for the one this year there was an issue with the recording and it didn't record. So yeah. the last one down there is just the PowerPoint that we presented for that, um, the first webinar of the year, the training, the mentor training one. Yes, but, and then again, I'll go ahead and click on one so you guys can see it. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. No, you're um, fine. For any of you that are administrators, I know there's a couple of you in here. If anyone has a career education that's not even a new teacher. These are great source resources for them in using these in their classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we've had some of our teachers use those to teach their students about different topics. And it kind of gives them a bird's eye view of um, what their teachers go through for staff development, professional development. Mm -hmm. But then it also, those are then more users that will come back to to CT Teach and to CT Online as yeah. well. Um, so it is a good resource. So let, let those teachers know that they mm -hmm. should be using these things as to teach their class. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. There's Julie. Yeah. Sorry, let's skip ahead. So anyway, so yeah, like I said, these, these are our webinars. They're all recorded. Um, you guys can go back and view them, see what resources we have, what we're discussing. Um, it's just an, a neat thing. And then we'll look at documents. I'll let you kind of, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, these were um, the original documents. Sometimes they showed up as those little icons. So I had um, recreated all of them in, in Google and posted them with a screenshot of the actual form. And these can be used for your mentor observations. It kind of gives a breakdown of the, the observation. I'm sorry, that's my phone. It recognized my voice. Um, <laughs> Always results. listening. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of creepy. Um, so I had rewritten these, uh, the mentor observation guide, the observation instructions, the responsibilities of the mentor, and um, the Marilyn Hunter forms that CT Teach had adopted. Now, I, start, I just did my first observations for fall, and all of, my, all of the teachers that I've observed so far are going through San Diego County, so I used theirs. Their, obser their required observation form, but these are always, always a good starting point when you go start going out to um, observe your teachers. Is there any of them you want me to open up? Um, What's your favorite? I don't have a favorite. Madeline there, Madeline Hunter. Your um, observation. This one? Yeah. So that's the form. You can just download it to your Google Drive and, mm -hmm. and use it from there, or you can just print it out. <clears throat> it just kind of guides you through the things that you should look for when you go into the classroom, and then you can kind of make notes on it. Yep. That's loud. OK. Very cool. Yeah, so, that's, so these are the mentor group resources. And as we said, every month as we get more and more stuff, we'll, this is where it'll all be housed and where it will be posted. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do another quick game. You guys can use these in your classrooms. If I could have everybody stand up again. And what you'll need to do for this one is find a partner. Uh, make sure you don't have anything in your hands, especially like hot coffee or something. So we find a partner, find a partner, find a partner. No, I am.
two there, so. We have one on. I'm not good at math. And then are you two gonna be? No, that's okay. Yes, so you're gonna go ahead and stand on, uh, find a partner. We're saying we can be partners. Okay. <laughs> so what okay. you're gonna do is, you're going to first stand back to back. And both of you are going to hold up a number with your fingers. It could be five, four, 10, whatever. And you can't use zero. And you're going to turn around. When I say one, two, three, you're going to turn around. And the first person who can count it, both fingers, so yours plus whoever, what the other oh, person the is holding. Oh, total of all four? Yeah. Wait. Counting all of them. Whoever can count it the first. <laughs> You don't have to use both. If you want to do just if you want to use just a five, you can do a five. If you want to do both, you can. So whoever says it first wins, and the loser will need to have a seat. Now you can't lose on purpose, but you need to have a seat. There is there is a prize at the end of this. So are we ready? So get your gunslinging counting ready. One, two, three, turn. Five. Nine. <laughs> you, you can stay here. I don't, I don't want to win. So if you lost, go ahead and have a seat. I didn't understand the rules. She didn't even give me a chance to say anything. I know. I was thinking that I knew myself too. So now find, those of you who are still standing, find another partner. Ready? Same thing. Were you still standing? I was. Deidre? Huh? How did we end up odd? We, we need a pinch hitter. We shouldn't have been odd, though. How weird. Okay. It's, it, it's just odd. Okay. Well, Janet, okay. you know how she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Eight. Seven. Seven. Eight. You can stand there. Oh, no. Twelve. Oh, I see. Eleven. <laughs> All right, if again, if you lost, go ahead and have a seat. I didn't need you. I was just doing it. You won. You won. Yeah, so now we're down to four. There you go. All right. One, two, three. Six, six, nine. <laughs> Patrick and Janet for the championship. One, two, three. Eight. Nobody oh, said a deeper voice. Tie. Oh, we'll do a tiebreaker. Okay. We'll do a tiebreaker. Okay. We'll tie tiebreaker. All right. One. You have to yell it like a pirate. Two. Three. Nine. No. Okay. Ten. Sorry. <laughs> we'll give you guys both a prize. Yeah. Oh. Make a choice. Oh. I'm like going it. for the m and I like that one too. Oh. Big prize. Oh no. Yeah, at least a big prize. I'll go sec second. There you go. All right. Very cool. So again, that's another fun game you can play in your class with your students. They love to compete and, and try to beat each other. So now we're going to move into showing you these. Okay, so um, CTT houses 14 professional development modules. And in the past, we had shown screenshots of them, and I thought it was a little overwhelming so I'm just gonna put the titles up here and then we're gonna get we're gonna look at the two newest ones but these are just some of the topics so engaging and supporting students classroom environment um, understanding and organizing subject matter planning and instruction designing learning experiences assessing student learning developing as a professional educator instructional technology which may need updated yeah because it seems like it's one of the older ones. So uh, work-based learning, middle school learners, which I think is interesting. We have um, career readiness specialists on a lot of our middle school campuses for the, you, the districts that we serve. And I think that would be good, even though they're not educators, for them to do because they interact with those students so much. Adult learning, community college, increasing rigor and relevance, teaching CTE online. And um, some of you might know that CryRop hosts CEO, which is um, Career Express Online, mm -hmm. which is 
courses that were developed by grant participants, I think like two years ago. So we have like intro to manufacturing, intro to healthcare that we offer our students. And we also ask some of the districts to pilot those with their students on their campuses and they're completely online courses. So yeah. um, the teacher externship toolkit and CTE foundations. So for, we're gonna review, which one are you gonna review? The bottom two. Right. He's gonna look at the teacher extern toolkit. I don't know, I can't say that one. <laughs> teacher externship toolkit and the CTE foundations course. Those are the most um, recent additions. Yep. And no. Oh, uh, pro, sorry, wrong way. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So this is the, go ahead. Well, it's just that we've, I've gotten to this page before, and when I want to work with one of my teachers on a certain module, if I haven't done all of the other modules, they won't let me go to that module. So you should be able to, so these are the 14 modules. You should be able to do whatever one you want here, but once you get into it, they do want you to do them consecutively right. in order. Right, that's so frustrating when you have a teacher that needs some help with, yeah, with a particular, you know, uh, issue that we can't work with them on that issue unless we go back and do all the other ones first. Right. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand. So, like, if I decided I wanted to come in here and do the adult one, I could come in here and complete that one. Right. Right. But what she's saying is once you start it, with the wrong button. Yeah. Um, once you start it, you want, you want to be, I don't know if I can go back to it. You want to be able to click around in here when you want and not have to go is that in correct? order. I think that's, it, there, it, it's, you can't do it unless, unless right. it's all been filled in. So like if I try to do five, right, yeah. it won't let right. me do the five and until I do four. And that's because they see the unit or the module as the whole topic. Right. So to finish that particular topic, you have to do all of those chapters. Okay. But if you go back, can we click on a different one? Like, so that was adult learning. Mm -hmm. And then um, close it out, yeah. And then let's say I wanted to do instructional technology with someone, we would take them to that one. Mm -hmm. And then it should allow you to complete that one, but they have to complete the oh, module yeah. in its entirety, right. yes. So kind of what we're looking at is if we wanted to take that technology, but we wanted to also look at classroom engagement, we couldn't go back and forth? No. All right. So well, see you could, it's just, you can't go, oh, I only want to look at bullying. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You have to start at one and work your way through. Right. If you wanted to do part of this and then go back and do part of the other one and then come back and do part of this, you could do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's just I th within the, the unit or module, no. And can I say something to that? Because I know one through six, I mean, those, those are our required modules right. that we use for CT. Um, and then there are things that they do pick and choose. Um, is it possible for 7 four, through 14 to open up mm -hmm. within those modules so that they can pick and choose? Because if they have a particular issue where maybe a teacher said, okay, there's this other kid bullying them, I don't know what to do anymore. Um, and there's, you know, at least there's that one little thing that they can go in and click on and say, okay, let's, let's review this. Let's think about strategies. Let's look at how you can take care of this. If you need to report it, you need to do, you know. Right. Um, is it right. possible to do that? I can ask. Yeah. I, I think the last time, I, I think it had something to do with following what they had completed and it made it more difficult if it, they were just doing oh, bits, okay. and just bits and pieces out of order. I mean, when if, when the website's updated, it make it might make it um, more yeah trackable. The, I'm not sure. The interim kind of workaround for now is once they're once they're complete, then yes, you can go back and choose whatever ones you want. So as you can see here, these are all finished, and now that now that they're marked as finished, then I can go in and click and click around where I want to. So if we went through as mentors and just did them all, then we could go to them whenever and, and we wanted. And show yeah, it to so them, and yeah. Uh, yeah. In all reality, you can just click through, just to get through it to get where you're at, just so you can see that one. And then, if you, because the test is at the end. Yeah, right. So you can go to it so you can see it, but then if you want to do the whole thing and take the right. test, go back through and read through and learn. And these are the things we tell our students, don't you dare do that. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to well, do that. Really <laughs> 
Yeah. And you know, and something else, as, as I've, I've only been doing this for like a month and a half now. Um, if you find that there's things in particular that your teachers are asking for, if you share that with me, um, we can see what we can do to add those into the webinars or into the trainings because it's all about what the teachers need. And if, I, right. if we're just producing things because they sound good or it's the topic of the week, that's not necessarily benefiting anyone. If we have a, a larger number of teachers asking for information on bullying and how to handle it, then I would prefer to spend my time working on developing something that. that's that needed. Sense. Does that make okay. sense? So all if right. there's needs out there, let us know and we'll do our best to incorporate those needs into our Okay. Presentations. Yeah. All right, thank okay. you. Patrick, mm -hmm. you got something? Doesn't everybody read the last page of the book first? Right. I don't. No. I don't. No. And if, if you have instructions, like I have to read all the instructions, you know how most people will just be like, oh, I'm just going to do it, I'll figure it out. No, I have to read all the instructions. Chris, yeah. can you click on chapter four just out of curiosity? Yeah. So it has information here. Um, about knowing your students, and then it gets to um, like a video here. Mm. Click next. The best way to get this successes so that at the end they can say, wow, I, I thought that was going to be hard. I didn't think that was going to be, I was going to be able to do that. But then they can and they feel very confident and that gives them a lot of confidence and it makes them feel good about what they're doing and it makes them feel good about you. And the last thing is purpose and that is they want to feel like this is relevant. They want to feel like this is not something that I'm going to do now and I'm never going to see again or I'm never going to use again. So in a career tech ed class or in any kind of middle school class, you, they want to see the autonomy, the mastery, and the purpose. They want to make it relevant to their lives. There you go. So, good stuff. That needs to be in the building. So true. Yeah. There you go. And I think one of, the, one of the traps that we get into as educators is we assume that we're all alone. Like our circumstances, nobody else has ever experienced them. Nobody has the class that I have. Nobody has the kids that I've had. And so it's good to have these kind of resources so that we know there's other people out there who can help us walk through these, these types of things. So, yeah. um, These are the mentor training modules that the mentors that are in the districts that are CTE teach grant awardees. They're um, required to complete those and submit those to the grant. Um, and they were designed to help mentors as they, as they start mentoring. Um, to be able to observe the teachers, understand the um, teachers, I lost my word, sorry, oh. the CSTPs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it goes over teaching strategies, whiteboard configuration, and something I was talking to, um, talking to somebody about yesterday was that um, I think all of this is great, and I think we need to take it and look at it how is it implemented and how can we differentiate it for each of the teachers that we're mentoring? Because just like we differentiate our instruction for our students in our classroom, we need to differentiate it for the, men the mentees because right. every single teacher has a different story, has different experiences, and you're gonna have to kind of, 
don't know, fly by the seat of your pants and adapt it to fit their needs. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So I'm thinking maybe adding something on um, the mentor cycle, like what the cycle is and what are some of the good strategies out there to ensure that you're helping them meet goals and then kind of starting over. This year we're in our tip, the, we're focusing on reflection, um, developing a reflective practice and they have to reflect each month. And then when they come in, they um, actually go through their whatever they've entered and they come up with questions based on what they've entered in their journals. So, and then that way we can make sure that we're focusing on issues that they're actually having in the class. You should know how you get there and then you forget like, oh, I don't remember, does anybody have any issues going on? Oh, I don't know. If they have that there, they can look at it and see what they've done and how can they improve upon it. So um, that's something that we're looking at and that's what I think the route that I would like to go with some of this information is building a more reflective practice like what are we doing that works really well and what do we need to change yeah. I think that's that's wonderful because it actually it aligns to the standards for the um, teaching credentials. okay so mm -hmm. that's and that's part a big part of it so that's that's that would be wonderful yeah okay. But we're not going to go through all of those. So, does anybody have any questions? I don't know if you can read those bubbles or not. They're kind of hard to read. How did you get to that? Which it's, it's right under the. Um, let me go back. It's not the PD one. It's this one. one. Yes. Oh, okay. It's in there. Gotcha. And if you can't, as long as you're in the mentor group, then you should be able to access those to complete them yeah. if you'd like. Very cool. So, uh, so like I said, new this year, uh, CT Teach Twitter, we've been using a lot more. Um, I don't think I can get to YouTube. I'll try <laughs> it. Gregory, we're blocking YouTube. Is there a way to unblock? We'll see. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we'll see what happens. I oh, think we're this there. one's working. <laughs> it was just that cat Maybe video. Maybe it's the cat video. <laughs> That's oh, right. Well, maybe. <laughs> yes, so, um, I don't know where are. Where's the rest of them? Yeah. Uploads? Click uploads. So, this is just, you just go straight to YouTube and look us up. That's right, and then subscribe. Right. But I don't know where. Maybe the other ones are blocked. Because we I wonder if it can be selective. Crazy I'm stuff. I'm on my network and I don't. Are you talking about this teacher induction program? Yes. Yeah. I could bring that one up. So maybe it's so just I'll, blocked. I don't yeah. Know. So I'll show. So like this is pirate, like what we did yesterday, um, and then we'll we'll. This is a different version of it. Yeah. Oh, but I'm on my box. There's two. Right. What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to show you something that is called a Google Expedition, and what this is is this is a way for your students to be able to see. Uh, and this is kind of what we showed yesterday. So this gives the pirate presentation we have. There's another one there um, that is currently being blocked. I don't know. Did I, That's weird. I did know. we give out like M&Ms or something? I don't remember. There's only, how many do you have? So we have There's only two. two. We, we have the two okay. so far. All right. Because we just started it, so that was from in service in the summer. Yeah. And then the tip was for August, and we'll have another one for tip that they're doing tonight. Okay. Um, so we're going to upload that, and we're also once he's done editing and making them look all pretty, we will do the presentation from yesterday, and we'll add this presentation oh, okay. as well. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to move this because I don't want to blast your ears out. This one here. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure. So our induction program is based on the modules. It's CTE Teach. So it's not the same as the It's a no. No, not the same. Um, remember, they are an induction program. Um, this is beginning teacher support, but not with its practical and not so Because a lot of people hear that same word and it's oh, that's not for me because so with our with our new teachers, mm -hmm. even if they come from another district where they've taught CT courses previously, they still go through the induction program because we kind of see it as not only um, in the introduction and updates to what they've already been doing, but it's also kind of an introduction to the culture of our organization. 
as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we put all of them through, because that, that was something I had asked, because I know I have a teacher coming in that has like four or five years of experience already, and it was explained to me, no, they, will, they all go through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we have uh, so a couple of things that we're doing, just kind of show you a little bit of, of what this, the podcast is that we are working on, is we have teachers, uh, CT teachers, who will ask us questions at some of our programs, and then the questions we can't get to because there's so many of them we take those questions back to our office and then we have ourselves and several other teachers kind of go through and answer them i'll just play a real quick snippet of it this year we're going to do short-term parking questions and long-term questions on some I don't of the like topics that. that being as the superintendent of tri-cities it doesn't sound region. like this is, so one of our weird. managers um, she that on yeah. where you can find this information would be to contact or career readiness specialists on your campus. Um, many of them have access to So there's that, and then like I said, we, we put up our, our um, workshops and stuff. So it's just a great tool to kind of get out to where people are at who are in CTE. Um, I've checked to see what CTE there is as far as podcasting and all that stuff, and there's almost nothing out there for CTE teachers, so. So the questions that you just heard us talking about on there was it came from an idea, you know how like if you're in a big workshop and you have questions and they'll say, oh, we'll put it over there in the parking lot. So we came up with the idea, it was like short-term parking and then long-term parking. So the teachers come in and they look through their journals and they pose questions and they put it in our short-term parking. I have a poster, they put it sticking notes up, it's anonymous. And throughout the, the tip meeting, we'll give them an opportunity for somebody to go up and just pick one of the questions off the short-term parking. If it's something that we can address right then, we'll answer it then, get feedback from any teachers that ha have been teaching previously, um, and then that's answered. We don't necessarily revisit it. However, the ones that we have to move over to long-term parking, or perhaps we don't get to all the questions that are posted, we, we create the podcast out of it. Yeah. So that we, and then we share the link with them so they can go back and hear the answers. Yeah. Because if we can't answer the question, we're definitely gonna find out and we don't want them to feel as though their questions have been ignored. Right. So. Yeah. Is there any way um, that you could, when you do your podcast or when you post something on YouTube, that you can send it out to your CCT, like an email with links? Yeah. Yes, and I, and I actually tried to post the podcast on CT online under CT Teach. But it never went up. I, I don't know what happened, and maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm not sure what I did. So, um, but yeah, when they come out, we can send out out to any of the admin administrators and teachers that are on the or mentors that are on the list. Tell them about Apple. <laughs> For Apple. Yeah. <laughs> so I. So here's how it works is, is I've put podcasts onto SoundCloud and then once I have it on SoundCloud, I've connected everything else to that. So when I upload it, it automatically goes to all these other ones. So far, Apple has told me twice, you're not a real podcast. And I say, <laughs> and I say that's not true. So I'm kind of waiting to give us a full, a full month of where we have more content on there and I'll try a third time. Um, and, and then eventually, yeah, hopefully Apple will be, be on Could there. Could you send that out, link out to us on the mailing Yeah, absolutely. So that when you get that. Absolutely. But yeah, but for now, I mean, it's, it's, on, it's on Spotify, it's on Stitcher. Um, I think okay. it's on, I don't remember if it's on iHeartRadio or not, but I mean, we're getting it out there. So, um, so and then. So if we get on Spotify, if we have that app. Then we mm -hmm. just then go CTE teach, teach and you follow CTE them. teach and it'll be right there. Okay. Yeah, and then whenever and then whenever we do put mine something always, up, I followed it, so mine shows up on. Yeah, the whenever we do put something up, it automatically will show up. You know, oh, about 20 okay. minutes later. So, yeah, and so again, like my my goal in doing all of this stuff this year, because I was like, I really want to get out there, is as I said, there's really not a lot for CTE teachers. I mean, if you look at this stuff, I mean, there's a million things for district teachers and, and it's good resources. Um, there's just not really anything for CTE teachers. And I really want to kind of work towards getting word out for, for those. So, and something to keep in mind as I, as we've started doing this is that on the podcast, some of the questions are really district specific. So if you yeah. actually listen to that, they talk about yeah. Zangle and Aries because one, two of our district uses Aries and one uses Zangle. And 
and we didn't, I, we were like, we, all of us had used Zangle, so he had to call his wife, call wife and say, yeah. hey, like a phone a friend for help, <laughs> to explain how to find something in Aries. So if, if your districts don't use that, I mean, it's not necessarily going to be helpful, but I did specify that you should contact the records clerk or find another yeah. teacher that's familiar with the system. Because um, a lot of times, I, I, was, I was in the classroom for 10 years, and I'll be honest, I liked my little domain and that was my area and I didn't necessarily come out much um, and now I see like how that was probably detrimental to my practice where eventually I got better but maybe I could have got better a lot faster than yeah. I did yeah. because I was trying to do it all on my own so yeah and we've had some basic questions about grading about rubrics and we've answered right. some of that stuff in there as well like they want to know how do I grade this project you know it's it's not a test it's a project right. so stuff like that so cool. So that's that's that. We wanted to. Oh, wait, before you go. Yeah. I know. We're, okay. So, tell them about your idea for bringing in the industry people and for that. Okay. So I didn't want to say anything because we're not there. Yet. Well, we're we've got it scheduled. We've not done it yet. My goal in doing this is I want to bring in a multitude of people to be on a monthly to start by being on a monthly podcast. I want to bring in industry people with industry teachers um, and have them just talk like just what are what is it that you guys are looking for what are you teaching and just have those conversations happen I'd love to bring in principals from several different schools that have CT programs on their campus and just really bring about the idea of CTE and just what goes on and, and being talked about so yeah that's I haven't scheduled and just we haven't recorded it yet yeah and just bring out those talks so like get it um, my car, my car most times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, well, I have. You know, you know, you did a couple times I, for I, those I, online for courses. For other things I've recorded. <laughs> There's been things I've worked on where I couldn't find a quiet place anywhere in our office, and I literally did just go to my car and plug in and turn on and just record there. And but, you have to wait and turn off the air conditioner. Let it get cold and then turn it off and then record. Oh, yeah. 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 No, but um, so basically what I, it's really not as complicated as it might sound. Uh, we have a couple Yeti mics that I've hooked up just to a laptop. And so we can just record on the spot there. So, so. you do like a Skype type podcast is what you're going to do then or. He records like if it. you're going to bring in industry people, how is that happening? So what would the process be? So just to look forward to it. Yeah. So so we would just record it and then post it. Like it wouldn't be a live, live stream. Live. Right. We don't have he anything would... live just yet. I do want to do video with it, but yeah, we don't have anything live just yet because that's a little bit more that's work. Awesome. Yeah, you got to really cross your fingers when you're going live. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bleep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, yeah, like students, I would love to bring in students. Um, and just like your idea with the poster yesterday, how you guys are uh, focusing on. Your, the successes of your students, that is something that we would want to focus on this so yeah. people can listen. And um, a couple years ago, we had to do a project at ROP, and it was similar to what you did. However, it was more like to make all of our teachers feel welcome because we're decentralized. Like, all of our ROP teachers are at different high schools, and, but the main office is in one place. So we um, had the teachers collect quotes from the students, like how, what do they think of CTE, how CTE has helped them, and we have those on the wall in the hallway so that the teachers can read them and, and the people that work at the office can be reminded that students are our focus and to keep us all on the same track so yeah. i think bringing the students is always yeah. a great idea yeah it's a, it's a great idea uh, we can brag that we're excited that we have some of our newer staff members are former students right um, and that's really neat so trying to talk about their experience yeah one of my former students <laughs> is one of my former students is actually one of our new teachers now and it's just neat to to see that they've gone out to industry and then now they've come back to be a teacher. I, yeah, I guess I am. I didn't think about it until <laughs> until he came in and was one of our teachers. I was like, man, but he's really young, so I should say that. Yeah. I'm not that old. He's really young. All right. So, <laughs> other ways do you CT teach? Is this one? Okay. So, um, other ways for administrators, if they are familiar with it, they could look through it to identify if they know there's a teacher that's lacking in an area or would like to improve in an area. They can go through and identify um, PD that would be appropriate. Um, you can use the information in there to create workshops, come up with webinar ideas or topics. It's self-paced, so that's the one thing about it is it's online, you can go in there, you can do a couple chapters and then come out and then come back to it a week later because we know as teachers, like 
your friend has four or five classes, that would be really hard. So it's self-paced so that they can do it on their own. And post-secondary teachers. I know with the SWP grant that they're looking for really, really strong ties to your community colleges. So um, actually, Elena and I are going to go to Rio Hondo College and do a presentation about CTE Teach. And um, I can't remember the title of it right now, so I'll just skip forward. Um, so we're going to do a presentation to them. I think it's for LA Teaches or something like that next week. And um, because honestly, if they pull in teachers that are straight from industry and put them into a community co college classroom, it's no different than us bringing people in, into industry and putting them in a high school classroom. So we're hoping to develop those relationships further in support of those other funds that are out there. Yeah. So now we want to show you guys some other resources. And these aren't necessarily under the CT Teach banner, but they're still awesome resources nonetheless. And we're going to start with our home base, which is at Cryrop. And if you type in Cryrop resources, all lowercase, it's going to take you to that page. Um, so at Cryrop, we have um, a lot of our own resources for teachers. One, one of the ones I want to highlight is um, our technology integration stuff. And we have ADA resources here. And this is all about doing um, ADA stuff that's online. So like what is accessibility? It opens up this PDF. Uh, other, other parts of it, um, creating an accessible presentation. You know, there's info in here about it, including captions, you know, retrofitting your stuff. There's screenshots on how to do it. So there's a lot of resources here at Cryrop's page. Um, we have AR and VR stuff as well. Um, the Merge Cube, if we get time, I'll show you it again at the end. Uh, but how to, you know, about the mer about Merge Cube type stuff. And so there's a lot here uh, for Cryrop. The other one I'll show you was the Durham College one. And I created a bit.ly for this as well. Um, Durham Cafe, and what this is, is, and again, this isn't ours, this is just, we call it sharing. That was in a PowerPoint that you guys did last year. Okay, very cool. How do we get to that? I'm trying to get to um, you can type Durham Cafe, and the D and the C are capital. And these are just learning techniques that they've put together of things you can do, teachers can do in their classrooms. Um, so I'll show like this, and she's got a video about all of it, think, pair, share. So again, she has a lot of stuff on here um, that you can do with students, and it's and all of them have a short little video like that on on how to actually do each of these. So again, just another. How do you get onto that? Um, you can yeah, type this. 
Yeah, and if you are on our presentation, you can just click on it and then open it and it'll open up right for you. Uh, and I think all of you have mentioned you're using CT online. You've used it at some point for, to look up lesson plans. Um, any of you in any of the groups, like industry groups? Okay. Then fantastic. So I'll go show you that real quick. I didn't see any for auto in there. Okay. It was just after it's not Let's see. So you're going to be under transportation. Yes, yeah, so it looks like there's there might be some things here. Um, engine performance. But yeah, CTE Online has a lot of information. Um, when I'm writing curriculum for our district, I'll, a lot of times I'll check in here to see what, what already exists. And what I also wanted to point out is the industry groups are really good. Um, I'm a part of, I think, four of them. Oh, no, a lot more than that. Okay, so... <laughs> So like when I was in the classroom, I was in this arts and media group and I still get emails about people like, hey, I'm wanting to do this program in my class or this project in my class. What software should I use? And I just, you'll just get emails, just people always having conversations about their, uh, how do I grade a certain project? And, and a lot of the people who are in that group will just give information. So you can look up your industry sector and just get, again, like I said, the, one of the, the dangers is we think we're, we're in it by ourselves. And so being in these groups really helps connect to other CTE teachers who are doing the same things you are in the industry that you're teaching in. Let's try to see what the other ones. So let, I'm gonna see if there's an automotive group. I found a transportation one. Okay. So there's like this one, California Automotive Technology. So this might be a group to look into. Um, and just see, just request to join and just see, who, see what there is out there. So. And they also send messages out. So if they're looking for like um, industry, what do they call them? Like subject matter experts if they're looking for stuff like that or they're looking for specific lessons they might send out messages mm -hmm. like i'm looking to teach this does anybody have any resources mm -hmm. and then it, if you're in that group it'll also be and allow you to reach out as well right and this is connected to my to my work email so when i do get a message on here it does kick me to my work email if i get notified that there's a question or you know there was an answer to a question that i had so like this one here um, was just it was five days ago, you know. Brian, oh Brian was asking a question, or Brian made a comment. So it, they're they're neat. They're good things to be a part of. Um, and I think is there anything else you want to touch on with CT Online? Mm -mm. No, you, and you've already talked about like if you go like the lesson plans, you can identify lesson plans, or if you search for course outlines. Like I have a teacher that's do um, a long term sub in the MA class. And I looked up an MA course outline, medical assisting, and um, you know, I can't say that it's all industry current because that's not my background. However, it had some specific lessons in there that could be pulled out and it had resources with them. So I kind of liked the course outline view because it clumped everything together. It was like, these are all my units and then these are the activities that we do under each of the units or each of the lessons. So those, I kind of like that, that outline. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, when I'm writing curriculum, I get a lot of great information off there. So we'll talk about the grant. So the CTE Teach grant comes out every year. We send the application out in um, the summer. It's open to any secondary school or district that has CTE teachers. Um, details on the application will be sent out July. Um, and any of the money that comes from the grant goes towards mentoring the new CTE teachers that come on board to your district or your school. So, I mean, I think you're all under... They're all under our? There's Valley ROP. Um, okay. And then the rest are all Fresno. Fresno. Okay. okay. Cool. You can sit on that. 
All right. is um, we just kind of wanted to find out if there's anything that you found that was really interesting today that's going to help you in your mentoring or your teaching from the information that we share. Anybody want to share anything? Yeah. Or another resource you guys might use? My group is thinking how I, uh, the CTEP. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. 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 Okay. I read some resources yesterday just through locally, but it's good to see what everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. Like across California would be nice. Yeah. So right. I just joined that one group you told me about through California. So. Fantastic. Very good. <coughs> Anybody have any questions on anything that we share? Yes, sir. No, I, I, I especially in this area of, of career tech ed, I, um, you know, my, my experience and again, especially at CARP for the last 16 years, was uh, the idea that you're bringing them as close as you can to the world of work. So it's a school to work and, and making everything authentic and, and that word relevant. Uh, really, for the main truth, that, that gal, I don't know who she was, middle school gal, the autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's huge. That needs to be a banner. That needs to be right here on mm -hmm. uh, the front of this thing. Because I, I, I really, um, I, I want the teachers to approach every lesson like that. If you approach every lesson in that manner, kids cannot be bored. You, you will eliminate almost, you will almost eradicate behavior problems. Mm -hmm. if you teach in that manner with those three things in mind. Mm -hmm. that was yeah. Somebody told me a long time ago, and you've probably heard it, that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And that has stuck with me every time we do something. Yep. Um, I know I appreciate the fact that you guys are trying uh, to reach out in different ways through Twitter and through YouTube. Um, I downloaded now, is it SoundCloud? So, oh, cool. Um, <laughs> So I have that. So that is going to be a helpful resource for us. And uh, I think we'll, we'll, and we will definitely use all of those types of media. Fantastic. Um, and we're old, but they're not, and teachers aren't. Right. <laughs> so they'll be a lot more comfortable, but we're going to give it a good college try. Right. Well, and, and going back to the podcast, what I like about the idea of it is that they can listen to while you're driving. Just in the car, turn it on, and just drive. You don't you have to. Exactly, exactly. You know, like YouTube works well for people that want to be able to see it um, and follow it, but I, doing the podcast version of it as well for you yeah, for the people who are commuting and just want to listen while they're driving. Yeah, I can. I can do. Yeah. Um, we were going to give away. We were going to give away Starbucks cards, but we'll just pass that up and do this instead. Well, there's there's actually two, and since we have we have an automotive person in here, um, I'll show you the Google Expedition first. So Google Expedition is completely free, and what that is is you as a teacher can start an expedition, and all of your students can join you if you guys are on the same Wi-Fi, and you would download. Down, this is going to be so hard to see because it's on my phone, but you would download the expedition and yeah, and then I'm going to click on this one that says how cars work, click on guide, and then they would all have that number pop up on theirs and they would join. And so your students will see, uh, it's like, sorry, this is so hard to see. Um, your students will see, start. This here, which is the different cars, and they can actually take their phone and like move around and see and all that kind of stuff like as if they're actually in it. And you as the instructor, you can go through and it has questions to ask them like what does the steering wheel do? That's an easy question. Um, what are the basic forces that try to prevent the car from moving? And then as you click on stuff like seats, it'll it'll tell them to move their camera to wherever it is you're pointing. So that's what a Google Expedition is. 
Uh, and there's tons of stuff. There's respiratory stuff. There's, I was telling Deidre, I said, I wish I would have thought you guys have a lot of agricultural teachers. Um, there's a veterinarian one that has like horses. And I mean, there's all sorts of stuff out there. So it's great. So that's free. The merged cube is this cube right here. Basically feels like a stress ball. Did you see this yet? Thanks. <laughs> Welcome, billet to C R Y R O P. <laughs> and so the merge cube is basically it's just this cube here, and what it does is there's a lot of apps that are available for it, and you just download the app on your phone. And I'm waiting for this one to kind of load. It asks, "Do I have a cube?" Yes, I do. Can it access the camera? Yes, it can. We're going to do phone mode, which is going to be hard for me to do both at the same time. I feel like I'm doing a puppet show. So what the cube does is it replicates. So that's a brain right there. And if you can move it around a little bit, D. So as she's spinning the cube, it's spinning the brain around. So it's giving them something to actually tactile to hold in their hand. Um, we'll do, I'll skip to the, the heart one there. So if you can move that around. Yeah, so the heart's actually beating. Mm -hmm. Open the brain. Open the brain. Open Go back around. No. You only need, yeah, you only need one no. cube. Um, that's lungs there. Okay, so there's the brain. And then if you tap on it, you can see the inside of the brain. It's got some information about it. Yeah. So that's the anatomy one. There's another one that has... Um, Solar system, so I'll start that one up. It looks kind of creepy. Yeah, it looks it looks disturbing. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> maybe. Yeah, okay. card, tarot cards. So tarot cards. She, now this is the solar system. So as Deidre, yeah, as Deidre's spinning the cube, it's turning around what's in her hand. And I think I can click on. I can click on Earth. Yeah. So now if I click on the 20. Earth. It obviously has sound effects. Nobody knew that. Is it moving? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. Um, merge. Like, merge onto the freeway, merge. Yeah. So that's it. So, yeah, so you buy the cube. Like I said, the cube's between 15 to 20. Um, they sell them in two packs. And then once you have the cube, then there's apps that you can download in an app store. Um, some of them are free. Some of them are a dollar. You just, it really depends on what you want to get. There's games. I'll, I will say there's like a Minecraft game that the kids oh, can. Really? Yeah, my daughter sat and played for like, no joke, like an hour and a half. Just oh. doing on a little. On there? Like, huh. that's weird. So it has, <laughs> I feel like Merge is just going to hire me. Old. So they sell <laughs> goggles. <laughs> they sell goggles that we have at home. Um, and Are they you, the ones that the camera, the phone goes? Yeah, in? so the okay. camera goes into it. So as you you're seeing, you have the goggles on with the camera, then you can use both hands and do stuff with it. Just looking through the, yeah. So what I like to do is I like to wear the goggles and have the camera, and everybody assumes I can't see anything, but I secretly can see everything that everybody's doing around me. That's always fun. <laughs> so did you get the goggles that went like with the cube, or did you just get any? Well, I got the ones that, that go with it, but I think you can just use anything to really hold, that can hold the phone. So I'm just wanting to make sure that your goggles are good. Yeah, my goggles are okay. okay. And we just I don't bought, use them a lot. I don't use them. I have a set at home. Yeah. And then I think our, some of our phones just, are too big. To it, I think anything that a phone can slip into and you yeah. can wear, then yeah, you yeah. can do that with two hands and, and it'll work. Yeah. yeah. It's different, yeah. Are you going to show them that, oh, well, we're out of time and we've got to get those things to give away. Oh, so that, what was that other thing you told me about? Oh, Jigspace. Jigspace. So this is another free app. Um, it's called Jigspace. So I should have hooked up my Apple TV. J Sorry. J uh, J I G Space. Jig, like dance a jig. Jig uh, Space. Okay. It's an app on the App Store. Uh, this has a uh, this has anatomy stuff or medical stuff as well. It also has. Um, I think there, I thought there was an auto one on here. Anatomy of a lightsaber. It's kind of cool. And, and you know, honestly, there's companies that sell these huge software packages. Like, have you seen the cadaver tables or the, yes. and yes. it's like, kind of look yeah. at it through there. Cause we, I think we had a company coming to us wanting to um, work with our auto teachers. 
to develop something, but it's like, if we can look at stuff that way, that's a lot more cost effective than getting something you have to pay to update every six months or whatever. Okay, here's a fun one. So this one is, this one in particular is just how to fix a leaky faucet. So again, I don't know if you guys can all see that. Let me scoot that in. So this is my leaky faucet there. I'm trying to bring it. It's, it's getting higher when I... Is this Jake's space? This is Jake's space. Um, but if I get closer to it, my faucet went really high on me. But um, it tells me, takes me step by step on how to fix this faucet. Um, and it kind of gives you just a step by step on you know, how to do this. And I, I can use my phone to actually walk around and get closer to it and look underneath it and all that kind of stuff. So again, that's another free app called Jigspace. A lot of neat stuff on there. Um, yeah, that's it. So are we going to give those away? Yes, yeah, so, so we're, we're going to give away Starbucks, Starbucks cards before you but leave. But you know what? I, I, don't, I don't want them to fill it out. It's going to take too long. Okay. So I'm going to think of a number. Okay. And then just have them get, uh, is that how you do it? I guess it has a number. How do you want to do it? You're going to be the bad guy in all this, so okay, however so you want to do it. How many of us are there? How many of us are there? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen of us. Okay. So I'm going to think of a number between 1 and 13. Who wants to pick a number? 9. No. 6. Close. 12. 7. 7. Yay! Sorry, I didn't get a chance to open it. Yeah. She's the first winner. Oh. Congratulations. And the oh, do another one. We were going to put them under your seats, but we got here and realized you can see through the chairs. Yeah. <laughs> that was our first plan. I was like, you can see through all the chairs. I don't know. Do another something. No, go ahead. No, you. A color. A color. Oh, okay. okay. That'll work. Somebody name a color. Green. Green? All right. right. Oh, yeah. That's what I picked was green. Sorry. I was thinking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, this last one. <laughs> Whose birthday is closest to today? My birthday is today. Your birthday is today? <laughs> you know, we're, we're real easy to condition. <laughs> Here is a card. Thank you. And I want you to pick one of these candies out. Oh. <laughs> All right. So th uh, we are deaf. Thank you for coming. Uh, if you want to contact us directly, this is our information here. Um, we are available email, phone call, Twitter, Instagram. Um, again, OCT teach and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and as long as you're on the sign-in sheet and I can read your email address, then we will send a copy of this out or link to this presentation to everyone. Yeah, okay? exactly. Okay, That's thank it. We're you. done. Thank you. Nice to meet you.